this week in post, a little HDR blending in on one photo. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In Post. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today is a Q&A episode. If you've got photo questions, send them on in to me. I'll turn an answer around to you, usually in a day or two. You don't have to wait around for a video to get made to get your question answered. And then uh, you might see your question on a future video. Uh, it really does help feed the idea machine behind uh, each week in and out. So uh, today's question is about HDR captures and blending them in on one photo. I've actually gotten this question a few times in the last several months, uh, most recently from Nikki, and it was time for me to sit down and attempt to do this type of blending. So the thing about it is, you know, on one photo is not HDR software. It's not going to take multiple exposures, you know, your, your negative EV, you know, nominal uh, positive EV. It's not going to do tone mapping or things like that. That's not what the software does. But there is some level of blending that we can do using layers. And so that's kind of the approach that we're going to take here is uh, if you don't have HDR software and you've done some type of bracketing and you want to do some level of blending, well, what can we do in on one photo? It's not pure HDR tone mapping, but it does get you the, 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 the darks, the, the mediums and the lights of a photo. So let's take a look. I went back into my archives to grab some brackets that I'd shot, and you may or may not recognize this from a few years ago. But what I'm going to do is I've got uh, a negative, a uh, nominal, and a positive exposure. So I'm using three exposures here. Now, if you're bracketing with five or seven or nine, uh, I don't know how well what I'll show you will translate. Um, and also, I'm not sure if you need that many brackets. I mean, even with uh, this was done with a, a camera that was the Nikon D7100, so you know, a 2013-ish camera. And the three brackets would usually get me what I needed. But what we're going to do is we're going to select all three of these, and we're going to bring them into layers. And so I'll just go to File, and then edit in on one layers. And the main thing I want to do is make sure I choose add as a layer. That will take all three images and put them into a single document. All right, so I've got the photos loaded in here. And so what do we have? We've got our nominal on the top. Let's call that nominal. I'll turn it off for a second. This is the overexposed one. Turn that one off. And this is the underexposed. Okay, so there's our three brackets. And uh, the way that I'm going to arrange these is I'm going to take the nominal and put it on the very bottom. And uh, my rationale for that uh, is, well, partially because of how I'm going to blend these things together, and partially I like to start with, you know, what's my baseline kind of at the bottom of my layer stack? It's just a personal workflow thing. So how are we going to blend these things together? I'm going to start with the underexposed next. Now with the underexposed layer, what we have is a whole bunch of, of dark stuff. What we're interested in is bringing in the highlights, right? That's what we underexpose so that we don't blow highlights when we're doing a bracket. So to get those highlights, the, the simplest thing to do is to create a luminosity mask. And so we'll do layer, uh, sorry, mask, create luminosity mask. Okay. And now you can see that that's, you know, that's bringing some of the details back from the trees. There's some of the sky there. You know, so if I turn that off, this is our nominal layer here. And I'm losing detail around those, those trees and the, you know, the palm fronds. And when I add the mask in with the underexposed layer, I'm getting some of that detail back. So that's pretty cool. So that's taking care of bringing in highlights. And it was, you know, a one click operation. So that's pretty nice. Now let's try to work with the overexposed. Now for the overexposed layer, um, I haven't had as much success with trying to do masking and so forth. But what I have noticed is if I change the blending mode to multiply, okay, and then we can start really just kind of fine tuning how much of that overexposed layer do you want using the opacity slider, you know, right here. And really what I'm watching for, if I were to change this back to normal and change this all the way up, you know, what is the overexposed image trying to get us. It's trying to get us those details that might be lost in the shadows. And so for this photo, it's kind of out here underneath this arch, maybe down at the base of these trees, not too much really under the door and so forth, turning that off. That's pretty good. I mean, I can see all that stuff. And, and even here, there's not a lot. There's really not a lot of um, lost shadows in this particular bracket I set. So let's turn that back on. And we're pushing it to multiply. And what multiply is doing is it's going to you know add more contrast. It's going to take, you know, uh, 
areas and and boost them up a little bit. So if I'll take that all the way down to zero and just kind of start inching it up a little bit until things just kind of look good. Um, somewhere around there seems okay for this photo. There's no single recipe uh, on these that I've found on this particular step. And once we have all three of these, we'll create a new stamped layer. So we'll do layer, new stamped layer, and that takes all three of these guys, puts it into a single layer, and let's call it um, blended, so that if I turn off all the other layers, you know, this is what I have, right? Nothing at all. There's our blended options, right? And uh, let's turn everything back on. Just take a look at our, sorry, not everything back on. Take a look at our nominal layer. So this is uh, kind of the, the base exposure that we had. And then this is what we got when we blended it. So it's better, right, before and after. And you really notice it up in the highlights area and a little bit, you know, out uh, in, in the, uh, the, the textures around in this, uh, this you know, doorway, this archway. Now from here, of course, you want to do some stylization, right? This is still pretty flat, uh, but uh, from here you can take this layer and bring it into effects. I'd probably make it a smart layer and then bring it over into effects and do some adjustments on it from there. I did a little noodling on this in effects and, you know, came up with, with a look that, that was pretty okay for this, but really you can see uh, that we've got much more detail back in the sky and uh, was able to crispen up undersides of the trees and so forth. And really what I noticed for this this shot is that the, the leaves around the edges of this palm were lost in the nominal exposure and doing the blending brought those forward. So the tip of the week is if you are going to try to do some type of blending of HDR brackets in on one photo, you want to work in layers. And the, the first step for that, uh, you know, you can do it. I see the tip is you can do it. Uh, it's not tone mapping. It's more blending and it's kind of more akin to uh, using luminosity masks or other selective masks if you're in Photoshop, if you've done it there. Uh, but it's, it's doable. Um, it's probably not going to give you the same result as tone mapped, uh, things that are, you know, specifically HDR algorithms. But coming from the approach of, this is the tool that you want to use, or you don't own HDR software, but occasionally you want to do some brackets, you've got some options with On1 Photo. That'll do it for this week's end post. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know somehow. You can leave a comment on the video below. Contact me through my website. Again, if you've got questions, send them on in. Love to hear from you, what's on your mind photographically. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport, and I want to do that intro again.